Good morning. Welcome to Sunrise Stroll, Chat and Share. And yesterday was, I think, one of the record days of share. There was well over 50, maybe 55, maybe more than that shares yesterday of yesterday's Sunrise Stroll and Chat. It was very, very good. A lot of people got to see the video afterwards, even if they weren't here. We got a nearly bird out there on his jet ski. Maybe you can see that little boat turning around there. Speed is the name of the game and splashing and sudden changes. Maybe 50 years ago it would have been interesting for me, but they didn't have jet skis then. <laughs> Welcome to this beautiful spot here at the Sea of Galilee this morning. The glory of the sunrise reaching the water. I'm not sure how much sunrise we're going to see. I haven't retained my memory exactly where the sun peeps up, but maybe it's right in front of us. Yes, 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 it's, yes, it's breaking the clouds here. Look right there. So now we know. Now we know where it is at the end of August, or more or less the end of August. <clears throat> Since the cloud is going to smother the sun pretty soon, I'm just going to walk over closer to the water to enjoy this special moment. There were our birds. I'm sorry. I just heard their wings. The sun on earth. The sun over the mountain, the sun in the water. Yeah, that sky will still give us a lot of potential for color this morning, even when the sun goes behind the cloud. I'm torn between two, two positions to take this morning for this sunrise stroll and chat. And I'm wondering if we will move quickly from here to the other end of the site. But it's hard to leave this beauty. Just taking it in, you know. Oh, there they are.
to get over here. So calm. I could imagine it's the the jet ski out there that's causing some of the ripples. Especially beyond that little barrier of reeds. It's a little rougher, so it must be the jet ski. So welcome everybody to Sunrise Stroll and Chat here in Galilee, at the Sea of Galilee. In the westernmost point of the water, at Magdala. And now the sun has gone into hiding. So I'm going to take that as my cue to go for a stroll, okay? And we're going to go um, maybe a little bit quickly because I want to get to the other end of the site. But let's see how comfortable it is you can slow me down or speed me up in case there's somebody out there that's high-tech experience with youtube i have to ask a question yesterday evening i had a terrible little disappointment with the german youtube um, piece live stream first time in german and live stream and it failed uh, it, the first minute was perfect the first minute and a half the sound continued perfectly the whole time. But then what happened was it went blank. The screen went the screen went black, completely black. I mean I was seeing a live screen the whole time, just like you're seeing this here. I was inside our synagogue and that's where I'm headed now because of the first reading. And the screen was completely black for everybody. For me it was perfect. And I don't understand that. So if one of you know somebody who's experienced with YouTube video, production, live streaming, uh, the lens was clean because it worked perfectly and then at some moment it cut out. And I have absolutely no idea. And it's a little bit frustrating, obviously. When you have something going wrong and you know about it, then you can start working on a solution. But when you don't know what the cause was, then, it's you're in the dark just like that screen was so we have a lot of guests the house guest house is full thanks be to God a whole new group of visitors arrived yesterday this is our bougainvillea and the red ones maybe before we go further we just turn around to see how the sky is doing Yes, it's nice, but we can keep going. Here you have all the olives. We come back again to the sunrise. But the readings today are very special, and that's what's driving me to go up here to our synagogue to read the text from Ezekiel to to see what they did with it. Look here, look at all the olives. It's amazing, tremendous crop. You want some? Just, you can have that one there, take it. A... And that tree was actually very severely pruned. I thought it was too much. I did my kind of observation complaint at the time. Somebody smiled at me kind of relaxed, be patient. And there you have all that fruit from the pruning. I know lots of people who are being pruned right now, very severely with illness, with family problems, with challenges. 
some Jewish people, some Druze, a religion I don't know too much about yet. I should know more but little by little. Some Anglicans in England, tremendous suffering. A man who was ordained an Anglican priest and his major, major outreach in Hollywood. And his wife is incredibly ill, Lily. And had four or five organs removed from her lower body. Hey, little guy, you know. Before you were born, little birdie, we were excavating here. So relax. And look at this here. This is our market space here, first century market. Had a number of Jewish groups yesterday. We had local tourism, you know, coming in. And they were very impressed when I said, how did you like our synagogue? It was the first time they heard a priest saying our synagogue. I'm moving along because I want to do a stop at one spot particularly and I want to read the the reading of the day uh, here and it's from Ezekiel 43 and the theme is very common so we're just going to oops sorry about that we're going to stop here just so you can see this the Magdala stone so, on the other side you have the familiar menorah. I'm not uh, going to do a whole explanation of the stone. The reason I'm here is for another, another purpose. Because of today's reading. And here we have the... Oops, let me see here if I can get you down to see the menorah. Everybody wants to see that. So, let's do the reading because this reading is very rich. And it's surprising and I'd need to study it a lot more but we'll do it, start with what we have so it's a vision of Ezekiel um, that's granted to him and he talks about two other visions earlier that were similar to this one so the angel led me to the gate which faces the east right now we're facing west and there I saw the glory of the God of Israel coming from the east. So there's an awful lot in that line already. I saw the glory of the God of Israel. So we're talking about the glory of the God of Israel. I heard a sound like the roaring of many waters. And the earth shone with his glory. The vision was like that which I had seen when he came to destroy the city. And like that which I had seen by the river Kebar. I fell prone as the glory of the Lord entered the temple by way of the gate which faces the east. But Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the inner court. I saw the temple was filled with the glory of God. Then I heard someone speaking to me from the temple. While the man stood beside me, the voice said to me, Son of man, this is where my throne shall be. This is where I will set the soles of my feet. Here I will dwell among the children of Israel forever. So the glory of God seems to be synonymous with God himself. One being said for the other. Like that figure of speech, I forget the technical name of it. So, the glory of God in the temple. And this Magdala stone is not unrelated to this reading and other Ezekiel texts. And the, the, the temple, the glory of God coming from the east, and the glory of God uh, dwelling among us. So, with all of the designs on this stone, there are many archaeological experts, or a number of archaeological experts, probably more correct to say, 
who have interpreted the stone as featuring the Temple of Jerusalem. And actually it's, it's very common that there are a few critics of that, but that's more or less the dominant understanding. And it's considered to be one of the most important discoveries ever made since the Dead Sea Scrolls. And we found it inside our synagogue, right over there you can see in the center, we can walk by there on the way back, uh, the, you can see the location where we found it. It was only about three feet under the ground for almost 2,000 years. So the menorah was a very important feature in the temple, and underneath the menorah, according to Rina Talgam, is the altar of incense, which was not physically placed underneath the menorah, but it's just represented here on 2D. And you have the columns of the temple, Boaz and Yachin, and then you have the colonnades of the temple on either side with an oil lamp, which is an important feature because those colonnades were very dark, and they go together. And then you have the famous Rosetta, of the, uh, which Rina Talgam says was the decoration on the parochet, the veil before the Holy of Holies, and the showbread. And over here, this is where we need to dwell a little bit. These are the wheels and the flames of fire, of the chariot of fire. And the chariot of fire represents the sun in pagan religion. And the image stayed in the Jewish faith, but completely purified of the Son's divinity, because there's only one God and the Son is just a creature. And above the chariot of fire is the, the mercy seat, the throne of mercy, because God was riding on the chariot of fire. Like Psalm 19 says, the Son ch uh, races his course. God made a tent for the Son, and he chases his course from east to west. like a warrior come forth from his bridal chamber. So what we have here then is a representation of the Holy of Holies symbolically. So this would be where God would dwell in the temple, which in the second temple was completely empty. The Ark of the Covenant had been lost since the destruction of the first temple. So. This is amazing because this community here in Magdala was obviously very temple-centered, temple-aware. The original stone, this is a copy, was taken from Mount Arbel, from the cliffs up here, in Mount Arbel. By chemical analysis, the scientists are sure about that. So it's a local stone that was carved to represent the temple of Jerusalem. And here you can see it inside the synagogue in the center of the floor. That's exactly where we found it. That's another copy showing that. And then you see three rows of seating, two in the center with the little pillar stubs and one inside the outer wall. You can walk around there just to see it. A teaching room here, a Beit Midrash. But let's stay with our theme. So, the glory of the Lord came into the temple. So we know how important the temple was for the Jewish people and how it was for us as well when we read the scriptures because it's clear that the entire message of also the New Testament is very much about the temple. And it's a theme that evolves, especially in that conversation that Jesus had, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. And that's a very intensive discussion, and that's a major theme. And then St. Paul goes on to say, you are the temple. We are the temple. And in St. Peter's letters, that we are the, the living stones of the temple. And you have the temple was the most beautiful temple of the Roman Empire that Herod had refurbished, uh, redone, completely uh, makeover, and it became the most beautiful temple of the Roman Empire. And that's a big statement because the Romans had a fancy, f had a, a beautiful city in Rome, an imperial city. So, <clears throat> this awareness of the temple, of God's presence, 
and it's very clear then especially through the flowering of the new testament and the fruit the new testament bore that the temple is transformed in the understanding where does god dwell the glory of god in the temple coming from the east and we're heading now to the east over to the lakeside again to catch the sunrise and its artwork in the clouds it's very pleasant right now sometimes it gets a little hot in the middle of the day in the afternoon and right now it's just absolutely enjoyable so the glory of the Lord It's his weight, his beauty, his radiance, his holiness, his uniqueness. What's the, what's the glory of an Olympic athlete? The glory of the Eurovision Song Contest. Sorry, that sounds like very trivial, right? But obviously it's an accomplishment. Somebody who could run the mile in three minutes, that would be amazing, you know? I'd say, what kind of a body, muscle, sinews, speed? The glory that we see in nature, in the cosmos, in the atom, in reproduction. You know, every one of these flowers has all the DNA it takes to make another plant like this or another tree like that. And the olives, you know, how many generations did the duration of these olive trees? You know, if you had a, a person around that was 120 years old, you'd say, wow, you know, this is... So we appreciate, what's the glory of God? It's really beyond words. It's beyond our experience. We've kind of little hints, like in this beautiful sunrise this face of a child it's also interesting that it's the throne of mercy where God is seated because the great theologians have said God's glory which was awesomely revealed in creation was much more revealed through his mercy His glory is more apparent, more beautiful, more astounding, more astonishing, more unexpected, more sensational, more a shock, that he would come to pick up the broken, that he would not uh, extinguish the smoldering wick, but fan it back into flame in our hearts, because he wants our, us to be his temple. I would live in you as the Father is in me and I am in the Father, so you in me and I in you. And you are temples of the Holy Spirit. The glory of God living in us. I think we have a lot to think about here, a lot to ponder. A lot to meditate. That's why we need quiet. The conclusion we had from the request that some of you issued to have more quiet during these presentations was corrected by others. And also even during the Mass, some people asked for drop some of the singing for more quiet time. But the very brilliant response and pushback came from quite a few saying, that's very easy. If you don't want to listen to all the talk here, you can turn down the volume or turn it off and just watch the sunrise. Or afterwards you can see it again and you could turn off the volume and you just see and contemplate. Well, we do need that silence. We do need a time to ponder. Absolutely. And we have those beautiful prayers, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. As the glory of God is filled with peace. And we have that beautiful short little prayer, 
You know, the, some of the ancient hermits and people of very deep prayer chose to do short prayers. They call them little arrows to shoot to God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. That notion of forever, I will ever, forever be their people. So it's much more than a building that we could make with gold and silver. I want to show you something special going on here, people. And it's, we can connect it to our theme. Two, four, five. Can you see them? Let me get them for you. They're right in the center of the screen. Imagine the view they have of the whole scenery of the sunrise. These motor gliders. Imagine the view they have of the lake and the glory of God in his creation. And the view they have of Magdala. <laughs> but somehow I don't fancy I'd like the view up there, I wouldn't like the noise. If we can hear their noise so powerfully, so far away, at least I can. Not sure if you can. Look, there you have five of them on the screen right now. So they're getting a little closer to us over here. I think I'm going overboard with the time. <clears throat> with the glory of God. So there is a thought for today. Continue contemplating the glory of God today. And how he wants to dwell in you and you are his temple. May you have a very blessed day. And thank you for joining us this morning. And for sharing this with other people. May you be blessed today.